Hey guys, it's Sam here today and I wanted to do kind of like a speed review of a bunch of products that I've been playing with lately and I've been really putting to the test and I have some pretty solid opinions on it for you guys. Not all of these are brand new products, but some of them are just like new to me. But I am going to give you kind of the full rundown of what I think. So if you're interested in that, continue watching. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And let's just get into it. The first thing that I'm going to grab are these essence blushes. These kind of blew up in the beginning of the year because people were comparing them to the hourglass blushes. And I do have to say that the finish is very similar obviously the texture of the product is similar but not the same these do have a lot a lot of kick up they also aren't that pigmented so i do think that in that way they are similar to the hourglass products so i, I would say maybe they're a dupe but i do want to warn you that you know it's much like the revlon blushes how they're very pigmented they're beautiful they work well they just have a lot of kick up in the pan so that's the only thing I don't love about these. I kind of just hate when I put my brush in and everything makes a mess. Especially, like, I don't mind it so much with eyeshadow, but definitely with blushes because it's a bigger pan. But I do like these blushes. If you're on a budget, I highly recommend them. I'm going to be holding on to them because they are that good. And especially for the price point. I mean, the packaging is very cheap, but for the price point, again it's worth it. This was something I tried a while ago. The e.l.f. Power Grip primer, the one with 4% niacinamide. I have been using this a lot lately, so I feel like I'm really comfortable now to like talk, talk about it. I do find that it works incredibly well. My only issue is much like the Milk, the Milk Hydro Grip. It's so crazy sticky, but unlike the Milk Hydro Grip, this doesn't give you any texture. So one of the reasons why I hated the Milk one so much is because Yes, it applied on very, very sticky, but then also when you put your foundation all over top of it, I found that that texture did translate with the foundation. And when I'm talking about texture, I'm talking about like you ever peel a sticker off something and there's like that sticky residue from the back of the sticker, the glue left behind and it gives you that weird texture. I do find that the Milk Hydro Grip does kind of do that on the face. And for me, that was a no-no on top of the fact that it felt gooey and gross. This does kind of feel gooey and gross to a point, but it does make your makeup last forever. Another thing to know, if you have oily skin, this is very dewy. So for me personally, I like to pair this with like a matte foundation. And then I feel like when my oils do break through, it looks more like a natural finish. Um, but if I was pairing this, there's been times where I paired this with a hydrating foundation and it was a mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake. I looked way too dewy. Then we had the e.l.f. Lash and Roll. Now I know this was like a dupe for, I think it was the Benefit Roller Lash. I've never tried that mascara so I can't speak to that but I will say I really like this mascara. I do have issues with mascaras from the drugstore transferring and this does not do that. It gives my lashes just a beautiful look and I really really do enjoy it. I like the applicator on here. I think it's really easy to use. Um, I don't find that it's pokey or anything like that. So I really do enjoy this mascara. Another mascara that I've been trying uh, recently is the YSL Lash Class. I have it in black and it has this really big daddy brush here. And I do find that it works well. I don't have any crumbling. I don't have any transferring. It is very black, um, but it's just a little too clumpy. It's just a little too clumpy for my taste and I have very short lashes and so they can look kind of tarantula like if I'm not, you know, going in with a comb to kind of clear out the clumps. So I wouldn't recommend this if you have short curly lashes. If you have long, beautiful straight lashes, this would probably be perfect for you, but yeah. It's not my absolute favorite. Let's talk about Danessa Myricks because I have a couple products. She came out with these new flush blushes, but I also picked up the Yummy Skim Balm Powder in the shade Universal. And I will note that 
it has kind of like a medicinal scent to it. I can't quite put my finger on it. It's not like Vicks, but it almost smells like a cleaning product. <laughs> and it's not very strong. It's very, very faint and it does like dissipate. But that is like the first thing I notice when I use this product. Now I will say it does an amazing job controlling my oils almost too amazing because i do find that in these cold winter days it did make my skin feel a little too dry so i would say if you have dry skin and you were to use this definitely be sure to properly prime and prep your skin before using this product but besides that, it does have a beautiful smoothing effect. It's also very long lasting. So I definitely am enjoying that product a lot. But those were just kind of my little comments about that. Now the blushes do have the exact same scent. It has that like medicinal kind of medicinal kind of scent to it. I, again, I don't mind it and it is so mild that I don't think most people <laughs> would even notice it. I picked up two shades. I have Golden Hour, which is this one, and then I also have Jubilee. These two shades are quite similar, so I feel like they look so different in the pan, but like swatched out, this Jubilee shade turns a lot more orange than I anticipated and I'm gonna swatch it next to golden hour so blend out they look kind of similar so I feel like I didn't need both the oranges I kind of wish instead of like golden hour or you know instead of one of them I picked up prima donna which was like the more hot pink one so that I had more variety they are very very beautiful though and when you want to just like monochromatic look these are gorgeous. Now I would say I put them on the eye. I can't recall if they were said to be eye safe. So I don't want to tell somebody and recommend them to use it that way if, if it's not. But I did use it on my eyelids and I did have creasing. So I wouldn't say that it mattifies completely. It does still stay kind of creamy in texture. So if you were to put this on the eye, again, I can't remember if it is eye safe. But if you... <laughs> find that it is eye safe be sure to put a primer underneath the next blush that i picked up was from house labs and now i hate and love this packaging it's just like every other metallic finished packaging that's out there it just gets nasty and fingerprints all over it i picked up the shade palermo peach and it does look really light peach but i do find that when i put it on my skin it warms up and it has this really pretty like it's kind of more leaning peachy coral so i do really really like this i i love the formula of this i do kind of want to pick up other shades but i i'm trying to tell myself i don't need them but it, it is really really beautiful this is one of probably my favorite products that i tried recently if i had to pick one blush out of all the blushes this might be one of them let's talk very quickly about charlotte tilbury i did pick up one of these pop shots in the shade pillow talk diamond and i do really like this do i feel like i needed this single no it was completely unnecessary i have this shade a million times over but is it a good formula i i do like it it's a great formula if you are into minimal makeup you don't like to have a lot of things you're kind of like a one and done eyeshadow gal this would be perfect for you the quality is beautiful the sparkle is beautiful the packaging is super cute again though it's she does that cheap little plastic packaging but the design element is really cute the other thing i tried from her which is not brand new it's the legendary brow gel and i got mines in the shade black brown and i really do love this it has a very nice small applicator here and it does add some fibers to the brow not very many this is up there with my favorite brow product which is the m cosmetics brow cream i do think that i still prefer that over this because this is just a little bit too fluid like for me so it could get a little messy where i never i felt like with the m cosmetic one the product is just a little bit more mousse like in texture so it's a little less likely to get messy all over the skin as in and that's what i mean when i say that 
but it does work really really well I would say it's like probably my second favorite brow product and then after that would be like the Merit 90s brow um, situation thing that they have going on so there's that and then I also got this like little sample when I put it in the order for the pillow talk push-up lashes mascara and I actually really like this I don't think it gives um any volume it doesn't give any volume to the lashes and I don't think it, it gives a little bit of length but what it gives is like this beautiful separation and I really enjoy the wand because it has like a flat side and then it has on the edges are the bristles and what I really like about this is the fact that the flat side you could really apply the product and then turn it on its side and then comb it through and if you like a tight lined kind of look and you have a hard time actually tight lining then and when I say that if you're not familiar it's the upper lash line coloring in that you could use this like I could put this on its flat side and press it really all the way up into my tight line and then comb the product through after and it, it does a really good job I feel like this paired with something that's a little bit more volumizing would be great um, so I do really like this. I think this is a really cool mascara, especially with that flat side there. Now I decided to try the Givenchy Prism Powder. I got mine in number four and it is, I'm going to just show you. So it has a purple, a green, and then it has these two peach shades. One's a little bit more peach. One has like a little bit more of a yellow tone to it. And I love this powder. It is so finely milled and soft. And it literally does the best job setting the under eye. And nothing moves. It's literally like invisible. Yeah, I, this is probably one of my biggest surprises in powder in a long long time like I'm a huge fan of the Huda beauty powder I've been using that for years and years and years and I've tried plenty of other powders trying to be better <laughs> and nothing has done that except for this and I'm the price point of this is absolutely insane I believe it's like $59 it's ridiculous but I'm actually considering getting the number five one for the summer and that's insane it's it's excessive but I think it is the best powder I've ever tried let's talk about this Christian Dior palette that I picked up this is the Mitza palette and I keep the little plastic in there let's take that out this is what she looks like and I love it it's not a face yeah it's just an eyeshadow palette but I like to use it as a face and eyeshadow palette and this is great for like the days where I really don't know what the hell I'm gonna put on my face but I do need to get out the door and I feel like hot garbage so I just want to like put something on and on top of that it's so cute the packaging is freaking adorable and the product is really good the shimmers in here are not anything special to write home about but again if you're just looking for something really soft and subtle I found that even like just putting these shimmers by themselves on the lid is really nice and soft it almost like you know initially like if somebody I feel like if somebody was to approach me they'd be like oh she's not really wearing makeup and then the more they look at me they're like there's a little twinkle on her eye you know what I mean kind of thing like I really really love this for that I think it's just really different from the majority of the makeup that I have because for <laughs> so long I was obsessed with color and not that I don't really still love color but this is such a contrast so I really am enjoying this I also bought this Dior blush. This is the one Charnel. It's 459 Charnel. I'm just gonna take out those little blush brush thing. And this is what she looks like. So I was thinking about getting this because Michelle Wong is always raving about this blush. And I was like, uh, eh, she's so fair in comparison to myself that I was like, eh, I don't really know. When I was Googling it, everybody who's trying this blush is really fair skin 
So I was like, this is not going to be an accurate representation. I have no clue what this blush is going to look like on me. And some people it looked gray, like brown. Some people it looked pinkish, rosy. I was like, what is this blush? Now I show you. It does pull up this color like peachy nude on me. And it is absolutely stunning. This is so like has been such a good purchase for me because I could wear this blush right and then I go to this palette and I just put something like this on the lid and it looks like I'm wearing legit nothing on my face but then it's like you can there's just there's just something like beautiful and airy about that look and I'm obsessed I'm obsessed. I also really like the little pouch that it comes in. This was a purchase that I was really happy to have made. All right, I have a couple lip products. This is the Dior Lip Maximizer in the shade Mahogany. Obsessed with this. Obsessed with it, obsessed with it. I don't think it really does anything to plump my lips, but the color is absolutely beautiful. It's very close to the natural color of my uh, lip line which I think that's why I like it so much because to me it just accentuates my natural lips in such a beautiful way so I do really really enjoy that the next one was elf <laughs> oh face lipstick I got standing ovation I think I have limitless somewhere these are good they're hydrating they're not very pigmented unless you're really like piling it on the colors are really pretty and flattering to my skin tone do I think you need them no they're not my favorite i'm happy that i have them and i will use them but like are they the creme de la creme no one that i do like a lot more than that is the l'oreal paris they came out with these i think these were the matte color reach lipsticks they're very new i got the one in 133 le wood um nonchalant and it is a beautiful nude shade on me it's pretty much my perfect shade my perfect nude on me i love to pair this with my anastasia pencil um in chai absolutely beautiful combo and then i've even topped it with this gloss and it's like chef's kiss yeah really really pretty um if you were buying a lipstick from the drugstore i would pick up the l'oreal over the elf i know this is more affordable but this is just better i've also been playing with this tower 28 um this is sculpting cream contour and bronzer i got the shade hammer i'm wearing it right now i do really like this but i do find that the formula is just a little stiff and so for that reason it's not my favorite like I really have to like work to pick it up now in the summertime this is what it looks like in the summer um you know the warmer weather it might be a little softer a little bit more pliable but it is winter still here even though it's spring so for me personally it's just a little too stiff so I still like if I was comparing it to my Huda Beauty uh, Tantor in the shade Light, I would lean towards that better because it's a little creamier. I just feel like it's a little bit more pliable, a little bit quicker um, than the Tower 20. This is still good, but it, I just don't feel like this is better than what I already have. All right, I picked up some things from Chanel. I picked up this Les Beige uh, Fluid Luminizer in the shade Sunkissed from Ulta. And I have to say, I'm obsessed with this. This is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, luminizers right now because it has a gold pearl to it. Most of the other ones that I see out there have this like white or silver or kind of, and it does look pretty, but it doesn't look natural. And I feel like this looks the most natural to a warmer complexion so if you have a warm complexion i highly recommend this it is very pricey though so i mean there are probably dupes out there we just haven't found from the drugstore if i was thinking of something that does a similar thing i would not say the formula is the same at all but the milani soft focus glows those are really really good and they have a warmer 
kind of sheen to them as opposed to like the elf hello glow or even those foundations like the l'oreal tinted serum like all those the the sheen in those are very metallic silver like so i don't really i even though i do enjoy those products i just don't prefer those products if that makes any sense so there's my two cents on that and then <laughs> know how fast this is for speed reviews all right I picked up the two Chanel face and eye palettes this one is the 958 and this is just so so beautiful they are just a gorgeous baked formula and they go on with a kind of like a satin sheen a very soft satin sheen they look more matte but they're because they're a baked formula they just still have a little bit of that iridescence this one is 957 tundras this shade actually can work as more of like a soft contour and i really enjoy it the highlight is beautiful both of them work well on my complexion so if you're my complexion they would both work for you i can't speak to this one um 957 if you're darker complexion this probably wouldn't work for you but they're both really really beautiful and i even think the um 958 like even considering some of these shades are a little bit bolder they apply very softly and subtly so they're not like crazy like pigmented where you're like oh my god i did something crazy these are very like user friendly that i think if you're my complexion or a little bit lighter this would still work for you let's talk really quick about these Uden eyes single eyeshadows so i did pick up nine of them and the little case when they released um and i didn't quite advertise it because Uden eye is not my favorite brand i actually been trying not to buy from them but it is very hard because they have really good marketing i'll tell you like they work with my favorite youtubers they have really beautiful color schemes but i just don't love their matte shadows they're not bad it's just not my preference so i did pick out these because they're not mattes they're shimmers and i do really like them some of them are more like toppers and some of them are more like metallic shadows i wouldn't say any of them are particularly special though in comparison to like all the other eyeshadows that i have they are really great quality if you want them but i don't feel like they're necessary i did not pick up any of the multi-chromes if you're curious of the colors i got i picked up anthony robert chloe samantha laura james Gabriel, Ella, Nora. I feel like the ones that have like the more pigmented base are better quality than the toppers because the topper ones kind of all look the same. Um, and that's just kind of my take on it. Now, if I was comparing that to the single from Charlotte Tilbury, I actually think the single from Charlotte Tilbury is better than these Uden's eye ones, but this is a lot more expensive and you're only getting one the other piece to it though is that with these singles right you have to have some kind of palette to place them in and this does come with like its own little case so that is you know pros and cons of the things the next thing that i want to talk about is this tom ford forbidden pink palette yeah i did that now i've really been wanting to try more tom ford products and this came out and i was like mm, it's the same color scheme we're always seeing do i really need it but I really, really wanted to try it because it's the cream formula and I have the Tiger Eye Palette in the cream formula that I really enjoyed. And I have to say that this is even better. I don't know. I feel like the, sh the shadows in here are creamier than the Tiger Eye one. And so for that reason, I like this more and I love this like little topper shade. <laughs> Wear that by itself and it's absolutely stunning. And... I don't know that I would buy like another Tom Ford quad because the price point is kind of outrageous, but I don't regret like picking this one up because I really enjoy it and I see it as like a really good staple. And Pat McGrath released her Sublime Seduction and her Love Collection for Valentine's. There were three palettes and this one is Sublime Seduction and this is the one that I picked up. And I really like this. I love this peach shade. It reminds me of my Hitopian Dream palette and I just really like the basic 
colors in here but it is basic it is a little bit boring but if you were like i don't like anything fancy i don't like anything extra i'm too nervous to get into color this is kind of a really good option for you and it is beautiful the quality is top notch some decent shimmers in here pat mcgrath does not disappoint with her formula it's pretty consistent so yeah i've tried a lot of good things there's some great things and then there's some okay things nothing was bad nothing has been bad but i think that is partially due to the fact that i've been a little bit more careful about the choices that i've been making because in the past i would just buy everything and i've been buying a lot but i've been a little bit more thoughtful so i hope you guys appreciate all of the <laughs> these little reviews i hope this was quick enough for you guys thank you guys so much for hanging out if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you didn't give it a thumbs down until next time love you guys bye